in XYZ. That's one of the books. So um, anyway, Kim is going to be talking to us um, about something that I think is, resonates with a lot of people here today, and that is the joy of urban beekeeping. So please welcome Kim Flottam. Do I need this? No. Yeah. You can't hear me without it? No. No? You can't hear me without it. I was hoping I'd get up here before the sun went down, and it went down. I've been watching that those hives over there this afternoon, all afternoon, and earlier this afternoon, uh, uh, Mary Capaldi was up here, and she was talking about the play fights in front of hives, and I've been watching those hives all afternoon. And if you have seen them, you saw the bees doing this, and doing this, and doing this. It was a joy to watch, actually. Uh, there were thousands of bees in front of those hives when the sun was on them. Now that the sun's gone down behind, uh, behind the hives, they pretty much call it a day, and they've all gone home. But there's one thing you can see here. If you sit here and watch, if you can see the bees, and if you get up a little closer, you can see it better. You watch when the bees leave the hive. And this is important in urban beekeeping, this concept where I'm going to talk about. The bees go either out this way, very low, head, head high. You watch the people and you can see the bees, glint, the sun glinting off their wings, going out this way, out over the garden, and then out. And they're about head high, about this high. You can also see them going that way. And they come out of the hive and they go straight up and they're about 20 feet in the air before they take off. Now if you have a neighbor who lives right next to you, what do you want your bees to be doing when they leave the hive? You want them going this way, right across their deck, across their lawn, banging into their dog and their kids and, and them? Or do you want them going up and over? Okay, we're going to talk about fencing here, but this is a perfect example of flight path. Bees leaving this way and bees going straight up. <coughs> the joys of urban beekeeping. I think a subtitle, a subtitle might be the cautions and cares of urban beekeeping, because there are certainly some of those. But another subtitle might be the benefits and the advantages because there are uh, certainly a, a, a score of benefits and advantages to urban beekeeping. And if you're, uh, is, are there people here who are going to start beekeeping, want to start? we got a few of those, quite a few of those people who have just started this year. Uh, a few of those, okay, good. Because what I want to do is I want to kind of go back to square one and some of the things that even if you started already you might want to you might want to either do more of or start doing and if you haven't started yet certainly uh, keep these things in mind we had up here earlier today somebody from the Montgomery Beekeepers Association and the first thing I can tell you is if you're going to start beekeeping or if you have started and you haven't yet join the club find the nearest beekeeping club that you can find because you will it will be it will be beneficial to you beyond measure absolutely uh, they know what's going on. Most, most local clubs are going to have a beginner's class. If you haven't taken it, take it. If you haven't joined the club, join the club. If there's two clubs close enough, join both of them. Now here's why. Because you can read this book. It's a really good book. But you can read this book, or you can read that one, or you can read any of those you, that you found over there. And they're all really good books. They all have basic fundamental biology and behavior and, and beekeeping management. But you know what they don't have? They don't have what's going on in your backyard. And that's what your local club has. The, local, the beekeepers in your local club know when spring comes, know when fall happens, know when the summer dearth is, know, can tell you what to expect from your bees in your backyard. And that's the joy of getting <coughs> joining a club because you're going to know get to know these people who can tell you these things. Now, it's the same token take into consideration the experience of the person who's telling you this stuff. If you're talking to a guy who's been keeping bees for 30 years and has a thousand colonies, and you ask him a question, he's going to give you an answer that is going to be shaded from his experience and his from his direction. If you ask the person on the other side of you who started keeping bees last year, they're going to give you probably a totally different answer. So when you ask a question about local beekeeping, uh, consider the direction that the, 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 the answer is coming from. 
I said read, 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 read as many good books as you can find, read some average books, read some old books, read some brand new books. You can't get enough good background information, and I and now I have a problem. Thank you. You can't get you can't get you can't get enough good information on the fundamentals and and the books will give you that. The local people in your club are gonna give you what's going on uh, in your backyard. If you haven't set up your apiary yet, and you're thinking of doing it starting next spring, is certainly the best time to do it. Oh, let me tell you one more thing. If you're not from around here, there is a uh, Bee Culture Magazine has uh, on their webpage a um, a link that says find a beekeeper, and in that on on that page you will find every beekeeping association in the United States. So if you're not from around here in Montgomery County or the Philadelphia group isn't where you want to go, you want to find somebody else, go to that page. Thank you. Go to that page and and you didn't open it. I did. I, you did. Good. Okay. I've only got one hand, you know. Uh, go to that page and and paperweight. Perfect. See, a local beekeeper. What can I tell you? Go to that page, find your state, and then the local uh, beekeeping association. J as I said, join them. It'll be it'll be certainly worth your time. Know your place. And if you haven't set up your apiary yet, first question: Is it legal? Now here in Philadelphia, it is. Now it wasn't a couple of years ago. In Medina, where I'm from, it's legal and it has been for a hundred years. But if I go down the road 20 miles to Akron, it's not. So if you don't know if it's legal, you got to find out because if you put bees in your backyard and somebody doesn't want them there and they call the bee police, you're going to have a problem. So you know, and the best place to find that generally is on the web on city rules and regulations, and they'll have can you keep animals, chickens and bees and cows and all of those things, yes or no, and you can find out that way. The bigger question, of course, is find out from your neighbors. And you may, your neighbors may be the nicest people in the world, but they may be bug phobics. You know, hate anything crawling, hate anything flying, hate anything buzzing. And, and you get along really well when it comes to borrowing tools and lawnmowers, but if you say, I'm going to put bees in my backyard, you may find out that you have an enemy living next to you. Not a good thing. You know, a bad neighbor can make can make life real miserable, and they may have some legitimate complaints. Absolutely, so there are a small population of people who are allergic to bees. They may be doing a lot of stuff out in the yard. They may have kids, swimming pools, all of those sorts of things. And until you sit down and discuss it with them rationally, you're not going to a know if they are, and b if what they are is irrational or rational. And then you can you can point out some of the things that they may want to that you may want to talk about. Um, swimming pools can be a problem. Let me tell you about swimming pools. When these bees go out here go out for water, they've, they've already learned a place where there's water and it may be, I don't know, over here or someplace that they, they're going for water. When bees in the, in the spring are first looking for water, scouts are going out, there's some going out looking for nectar, some going for pollen, and there's some scouts going out looking for water. And, and if you are a good conscientious beekeeper, you've put out a tub of water. That's what all the books tell you to do. And it's nice, clean, fresh water, and it has zero odor. It has no odor at all. Bees can't smell brand new, fresh, clean water. However, right over there is a swimming pool. And it has an odor cloud of, of chlorine gas rising above it that's like a neon light. And it says, water. First thing in the spring, they're going to find, which one are they going to find? The nice clean water that you put out or the neon sign over there in your neighbor's yard. So what you want to do as a beekeeper before they, you want the water out there, before they're flying in the spring, that's probably here like what, February? Where I am, it's March, I want my water out there and I want it to smell like something. Now I can put in, you know, some anise oil or some licorice oil, I can put in something to give it an odor. They'll find that before my neighbor gets his pool full of water in the spring and I'm pretty much home free because water is going to be there all summer. They found it, they know where it is, they know what it smells like and they're not going to go over to this guy's pool unless I let this go dry. Bad problem because they're going to find water. Swimming pools right next door. Guess where they're going to go? What bees do when they go in a swimming pool is they get on the edge of the pool, they get on the steps, they get on the toys that are in the swimming pool. Kids go to pick up toys, people walk down the steps usually not a good thing. So if you're going to, if you are setting up your apiary, water is one of the things you want to, th you want to think about and 
early in the season is how, when you want to think about it. 